You have been a tremendous blessing to those of us that traveled here, and we are grateful to you. We know the Lord will not forget your labors of love. We thank you for that. <clears throat> I am what I am today in Christ Jesus because his salvation has truly changed me. And I can, I can confess that I know that God is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And I am looking forward to this reward that he has laid up for us in heaven. Brother Dave did tell the truth yesterday. <laughs> I was concerned. I, first, I consider it an honor to be standing before you. Um, but I didn't want to say anything that was untrue or that was not like the Lord. So I was a bit nervous. But I know the Lord is full of grace and mercy. So with that, we'll begin. Uh, the topic for this year's renewal and the past renewals have centered in Christ Jesus. Jesus must be the center of all things. In fact, the kingdom does not center around what people need, rather what God has to give them. And we see this in the man that was born blind. Um, this is what it reads in the scriptures. And Jesus' Jesus's disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Now there is no doubt this man had a problem that needed to be met. But there was a greater issue at hand. It was that the Lord's works might be made glor glorified. He might be glorified. So my desire in giving my testimony today is to show forth the glory of the Father and of the Son and how they, with the Holy Spirit, are leading me to my eternal home in heaven. I do not want to leave you thinking of me. Rather, I want you to think of how the Lord is bringing all of us home and how he has brought me out of the deep pit of despondency and despair and has set my feet upon the solid foundation which is only found in Christ Jesus. And I will confess that there was a time when I was dead in my trespasses and sin. I was without hope and I was without God in the world. The love of the Father did not dwell within me and there was nothing good that could be found in me. There was nothing that the Lord could use because I was spotted by the flesh, and we know that the flesh profits nothing. In fact, if I had gathered all of my righteousness together, I would have only still been able to offer filthy rags to him. But on April 5, 1987, at the age of 11, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave, raised me up. And he brought me to a place where I could walk in newness of life. No longer did I have to live in fear of the Lord's return, or live daily with a guilty conscience, or be a vessel of dishonor. I was made into a vessel of honor, fit for the master's use. Some of you may think that I didn't have a long enough life to do anything that was terribly bad. But I had met all of the qualifications to need a savior. I was part of Adam's race. And I would, ex I would have expressed the sin that was in me worse than I already had. The point is the nature. We all needed a new nature. This was vital for us to be able to be with the Lord. And by the grace of God, he gave me faith, and he gave me many gifts. And Christ had led me, who was captive, and he set me free, and he gave me many gifts. I remember wanting to please the Lord. I love the Lord. I wanted to please him. I had a desire to speak about the things of the Lord, that I had, things that I had seen and things that I had heard of him. I wanted to do what was right. And in fact, if the church doors were open, I was there. I was involved in church. I was involved in the youth group and the choir. 
<clears throat> and I was actually looked to as a leader. This youth group was not just any kind of youth group. It was a mega church. <laughs> it was a big church. There were many events that we had scheduled throughout the year and throughout the time I was there. But looking back as I was preparing this testimony, there was something that was missing there. And I'm not against youth groups. I'm not against get-togethers or anything like that. But the thing that was missing was Jesus. Christ and the kingdom were only sprinkled throughout what we did. He was not the emphasis. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If the true Jesus is not preached, then people become the center. And if people become the center, they will die. If you live after the flesh, you will die. No questions. John said, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. And unfortunately, in our day, there is another Jesus that is being preached. This is a great tragedy, and this is a sin. And the Lord will not accept any other message that is preached. Paul warned the Galatians concerning this matter. He said, but even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. So we know how the Father feels about this false Jesus that is being preached. So I was, I was led astray by what the Bible calls hirelings. And the text was touched on to, uh, this week in Ezekiel 34, what the Lord feels, how he feels about these shepherds that are supposedly shepherding his flock. And we know that the Lord does not look kindly upon this. And because of this, I was not equipped to walk by faith and not by sight. I did not know that there were two natures living within me, and that whichever one you feed lives, and whichever you don't dies. We know that the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. I had never heard, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. Justification, sanctification, redemption, all of these wonderful foundational stones that we find in the scriptures were not preached. Therefore, I was not equipped to fight the good fight of faith, and I was no match for the flesh or the enemy. You might ask yourself, well, didn't you have a Bible? Couldn't you read and find it for yourself? Well, I liken myself unto the eunuch who is reading in Isaiah. And Philip came to him, and he said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some man should guide me? Amen. And then Paul said this. He asked these questions. He said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, I had called upon the name of the Lord. But how shall they call upon the name of the Lord, whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? The same gospel that is preached to save men is the same gospel that is used to keep men until the coming of the Lord. So you might be asking yourself, how does this testimony fit in with the prophecies of Christ, or the prophecies of the Messiah? Just as the writings of the prophets pointed to Christ, our lives point the same direction and how he is leading us to himself. When we see Christ, there is not a limit to how the Lord is able to use us for his glory. Our lives in this world may be filled with troubles and heartache, but we can reason that I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Christ has not come to be a part of our lives, and we've already discussed this, this week that he's already gone back to heaven. 
we have died and have been raised to be a part of his life. The scriptures say that we are seated with him in heavenly places. Our life is hid in Christ Jesus. So we reason that we are there too. When we see our Lord Jesus by faith, we conclude that he is altogether lovely. And he is our source of life and strength and our hope. And he truly is our focus. All throughout the scriptures and history, the saints of old have all gained their life and strength by one thing. And that is the coming of the Lord. Whether it was under the old covenant and them looking for the Messiah, or whether it's right now looking for the King of kings and Lord of lords, they all gain their strength from his appearing. He has been the driving force behind all those who walk by faith. And he has been the focal point for the Father, too. I want to leave you with this scripture and exhort you all to be doing this, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall, be, shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look, we're looking, for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And we know that where righteousness dwells, nothing else can dwell there with it. Amen. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. <laughs>